Mm-hmm. I went outside and got some fire for the wood. Listen to the creek babbling. Fire for the wood. Because you got to bring fire to the wood, right? Everyone knows that, Ash. God, I thought you were a doctor. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a fire doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ashley Morland and I'm joined today by David Masterton and you are watching the Remind podcast or listening to the Remind podcast where we combine neuroscience, spirituality and personal development to help you heal your deepest wounds and transform your life. Today's episode, episode 18, we are going to be talking all things self-sabotage, how to show up when every cell of our body is trying to make us not show up, trying to keep us safe. So Dave, this is super relevant for us today. I'm going to hand Mm. over to you so that you can give us a little bit of context about how this topic came about. Well, thank you, Ash. Lovely to be here. Or maybe it's not lovely to be here because, quite frankly, today I'm not feeling like I want to be recording. So what a day to be (laughs) talking about this topic. Um, Yeah, I guess last, last night, this morning, just not feeling the vibe, feeling very retreated, I think is probably the best word. And when it came to do the recording today, I had a list of things that I I could only say would have been things I would have wanted to do just to maybe distract myself from the way I'm feeling. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting sort of discussion because I'm just not feeling it today. (laughs) (laughs) So, guys, this is really important because one of the things that is really important to us is that we're transparent that you see that we're human too and dealing with our human stuff as it comes up hopefully is really empowering and really encouraging for you. So Mm. something that I really love is that I know how much you love doing this show, Dave. I know how much you get out of it. I really love doing it with you. I really love all of it and I know you do too, which is why it's really interesting that when these things come up for us, our nervous system or our mind is actually trying to sabotage the things that we love, the things that are important to us, the things that would progress us in our career, in our finances, in our physical health, in our mental health. It's kind of like, I know that if I did this, it would be really good for me, but I'm so stubborn. I don't want to do the thing that's good for me. Mm. I want to go and do all this other stuff that is going to help me to avoid the things that are good for me. So lots of people will be able to relate to this example. Where are you at? What what in terms of you said you've got a whole list of things that you would rather be doing otherwise. What are those list of things for you? Well, it's not a, I mean, I say a whole list of things. It's really going to be a couple of things. It's going to be comfort eating, binge watching, and then just trying to hang out with people to distract or maybe actually it'd be to hang out with people to just bitch about things that are annoying me yeah, that's wow. that's that's kind of like the big top three right mm. you know obviously there's you know i just got this feeling like i've got like I'm, I'm feeling a bit flat i've got a bit of a chip on my shoulder i'm just you know and so what's the best way to do it is talk about all everyone else's other other problems and bitch about it so i can sort of go well you know um None of those things are really quite healthy. And one thing for me in particular is when I start feeling this way and it comes in waves, is it triggers for me being a single dad and with the kids at their mums, I feel alone. And for me, that's a that's a that's a real tough one. And I'm I'm alone. Um 
yeah, because I'm 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 choosing for the to wait for the right person, do my own work, not just sort of rush into something for the sake of just having to fix this feeling. Even though right now, um, when you have these kind of feelings, going and making decisions to get rid of this feeling of being alone mm. would take away this problem pretty quick smart, but probably create a whole lot of issues in the future. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I, the funny thing is when I get into these moods, I get into my head a lot. I'm trying to overanalyze it. Well, you've got this. Is that the problem? Is it this? Is it that? Is it, is, is it? And I'm very quick when I try and get into my head to try and problem solve it for myself as opposed to sitting in it. And what I used to do is put it down to um, if I felt this way and it was a full moon, just to note, as of recording, this is a full moon, um, <laughs> I would put it down to the fact it's a full moon I'm just got my werewolf craziness on and then have to, sh and then just sort of shush it away. Um, which, you know, I'll guarantee there's something there, but I don't think it explains everything that's going on. And so it's a battle I've got to say, mm -hmm. and it's, I'm not sort of saying a battle as in I'm depressed. No. Am I anxious? No. Is it, is this, Massive issues, no, but right now for me, it feels like a lot. And it feels yeah. like, you know, there's it's a it's a test of, you know, do I succumb to these urges to fix and get out of this feeling or not? And so, yeah. Um <laughs> Very interesting you say that. I just looked down at my phone and Netflix gave me a notification. Have you seen? <laughs> <laughs> You're being very invited to step into that test, aren't you? Synchronicities plus, David, go do something mm. else. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess in the past, what would I have done? Maybe had some drinks. Um, full distraction. Yeah, that's that's I'm right. Right now, all, right now, all I'm looking for is a distraction. Yeah. Honest to God, as much as as much work as I've done in the past, as much work as I know I'm going to be doing in the future. Right now, the interest of actually doing any work and sitting in this right now could not be closer to zero than possible. Mm. I was like, I just, I simply, I won't say I don't care, but I'm not interested. It's yeah. almost like a bit of an aggravated. Again, chip on the shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, and then you start. So to it's play a deflection. It. It's a deflection because it matters to you. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, and so it's really interesting that the things that were on your list are all self-soothing: the binge eating, sitting mm. down and binge watching, binge watching Netflix. Like when you mm. think about your nervous system. It, yes, you said you're not depressed. You're not anxious, but there is the behaviours and the thought processes that are coming up absolutely point towards dysregulation. And dysregulation mm. simply means that there is a threat. Your nervous system has detected some kind of threat. And oh, yeah. the threat doesn't have to be real in reality, but the evidence that the threat is real for you is the fact that you're having those compulsive desires, <laughs> that mm. you you have the, the compulsive desires to binge eat to lay in front of the, the tv and binge watch netflix and to mm. sit around and probably eat junk food and drink alcohol and whinge and moan to friends um through that kind of real trauma bonding type situation and so you're here even though you didn't want to be here mm. how because you could have messaged today and said no nah, i'm i'm not doing it i'm done so why are you here yeah, that's a good question because I got very damn close. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Um, I I guess the desire to push through was greater than like, – I, I don't I, – and I can't even say that. To be honest, Ash, I don't know. I, honest to God, I don't know um, because it was sort of like 
um, even my victim mindsets cropping up. It's it's like if there was like if my brain had a dashboard like a car, most of the lights are on. And it's phenomenal because then I, when I get into my head, I look around and go, what do I have to be worried about? What do I have to justify this feeling? I wake up in a house that I own, right? It's mortgage, but you know, I still own it. I'm not renting, right? So suddenly for all the renters out there, my heart goes out to you. What do I have to worry about that, that, you know, that these people aren't coping on a day-to-day basis? It's a beautiful day. I then go get wood for my fireplace, which I've just put in, which has made the house feel so amazing. I put the fire on. I have a creek that runs down the side of my house. I'm I'm waking up without an alarm and I'm doing a job that I love. Like I think to myself, what the f*** do I have to worry about? I will beat that out later, by the way. But what? The, why am I feeling this way? And then, so why did I show up? It's, okay. um, I guess at the end, it's sort of like, what's the worst that could happen? It was slightly more of a victim mindset, I suppose. Well, if it's going to be a shit day, I might as well just. And part of me thought, to be honest, actually, as I'm talking and processing, which is unlike me, because I'm usually, I feel as though I have my thoughts gathered when we come into an episode, but today you're getting a very much a raw David. I thought it would actually be interesting to talk about a topic while I'm right in it, not having to feel as though I have to show up and mask it. Mm. So there, there Taking it is. Taking authority over it. Doesn't feel like it at the moment. Yes, the action's... Is absolutely that. It doesn't feel like it though. It's. I feel like I'm a bit more of a passenger in all of this than in complete control. If I'm brutally honest. Yeah, and that's that's the thing about a stress response, right? It's like touching a hot stove. Mm. You don't get a say in whether or not your hand withdraws. If you remove one foot from the ground and you stand on one leg, you don't get a say in what muscles recruit in what order to redistribute your body weight so you don't topple over. You are Mm. a passenger in those reflexive things. But if you didn't withdraw your hand, you would get severely burned. If Mm. you didn't redistribute the body weight, you would topple over. And so the, the things that happen as automatically as breathing in those reflexive ways are essential for your well-being, like they're essential for your survival. Mm. And the reason that that's important is because you're saying that you feel like a passenger in this whole situation, in this scenario. You haven't got control over the thoughts that you're having. You haven't got control over the way these things are playing out. It's because you don't. You are a passenger mm. in that. It is a, it's an unconscious pattern and an unconscious program that's playing out. And so to feel a passenger is pretty accurate because when – And someone else can look at that and go, oh, that's so irrational. You've got nothing to be worried about. You've got nothing to be upset over. But that's really quite like you're gaslighting yourself, right? 100%. But but that's the way I feel. So, like, I have to feel this way for a reason, right? Yeah. And so when I try and take control, because I am a passenger, I mean, the only place where I think the steering wheel is, which is in my head, in my brain. And so I'm overthinking all my mind, right? And yeah, I think it's really courageous that you were willing to have this conversation. Mm. I'm grateful. It, thank you. Because <clears throat> it, it, it feels big, even though when I look back at this, I know when I look back at this point in time in a day or two or when I re-watch this episode, I'll be in a completely different mindset. But right, and I'll look back and go, it, it, it wasn't a big deal. But for me right now, or even in the lead up to this, this is a massive big deal. Mm. And yeah. um, But I can't cognitively, what's the word? I can't validate that with numbers or yeah. um, reasons or whatever it is. And so I guess sharing that as well to sort of say to people when you are feeling this way, to be able to, yeah, it's much easier to go, you know, I've had this major thing happen to me. 
And I don't wish that I, it happened to me, but at least I can understand why I feel this way. Yeah. When you don't have that, or there's something else that's almost invisible but feels frighteningly real. Mm. Um, and so at least I suppose I'm grateful that I have the ability to feel this way and have some understanding, not a lot, but have some understanding as opposed to just retreating. Yeah. So we've spoken a lot about me in all of this, and I'm happy to continue doing it, but I really want to be able to start to give people who have found this podcast, found this episode, give them something to be able to sort of go, okay, you've you found yourself in this position. You don't want to be like this, or you found yourself in multiple positions. What do we do to get through it? I mean, yeah. for myself, it's, it's fairly clear. I Now it's fairly clear, I should say. I wanted to do this because I wanted to show up in this as I am. But if this was anything else, if this was another meeting, <laughs> if, yeah. I didn't care, if I didn't really care about the project. <laughs> yeah, and it's a really fine balance. And so there's there's a few things. One thing I wanted to ask is, have you always had an agreement that thing you can only accept things that you can make sense of? Agreement, no. Way of life, yes. So if it's a way of life and something you already do, it means you're in agreement with that. Yeah. <laughs> so when I, mean, I say I, agreement. I mean, a, agreement for me means we have a choice, right? Mm -hmm. Do we agree to do this or to do that or to whatever? I don't agree to breathe air. It's just something that happens, right? If I don't, mm -hmm. that's just the way it is. I didn't necessarily agree to have day come after night or does night come after day or does the sun follow the earth or does the earth follow the sun? Like these things are not agreements. These are just, you know, their acceptance or they are, it's just the way life was. So mm -hmm. to me, and I do agree with your statement of agreement, but I'm coming at it from I've never known any better in my life. hundred percent. And it's a complete unconscious agreement. I wholeheartedly agree with you. And this is something that I realized. I had an agreement that I needed to understand something in order to release it. Mm. Mm. The problem with that <laughs> is that it resulted in me holding on to a lot of things because I couldn't make sense of them and couldn't understand them. But by default, it meant that I was holding on to things that I could have just chosen to let go of and been free and not be at the effect of those things anymore. And so you were talking about wanting to have understanding and awareness of why you were feeling this way. and Almost like a validation. Away. I have to yes. validate it. Yes. Right? I had to qu and quantify it. That's the word I was looking for earlier, yes. quantify it. And if it's not logical and it doesn't meet the parameters of your analysis or quantification, then it makes it not okay. It doesn't make sense anymore. And if it doesn't it's make sense. Still swirling yeah. in my head until I get there, which in itself adds to the frustration, the, the pain. And clearly I'm yeah. coming at this from a very overthinking standpoint. Um, I'm not sure if everyone's the same as me, but yeah. Sorry, keep on going. Yeah. So the point I was going to make is that for many, this is really common, for many, many people to not know is very threatening. It's very dysregulating to not know. And so if we, that's why we look for explanations and things. It's why we look for explanation. It's, you know, right down to you, you use the full moon as the example. We will look mm. for an explanation as to why things are as they are which actually prevents us from accepting the things being as they are, which keeps us stuck and avoids us from actually mm. moving on. So it's also a lot of the reason why, um, you know, people want to go see psychics and want to, I don't know, read the stars and all the things. Mm. because Tarot and oracle cards. Yeah, all that, yeah, because it feels unsafe to not know. Mm. And if they can control the situation by bringing certainty through knowing, then they feel safe. 
But the deception of that is that you're already safe. And if you can surrender, and surrender requires acceptance, things are going to work out. So now, how do I how do I surrender to something that I don't know is making me feel this way? Because, well, sorry, because sorry. It, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what do you know? I feel this way. How does that feel in your body? Crap. Just be more descriptive. Where do, where does it well, feel crap? Well, normally I could be. But because it feels so big, I can't pinpoint it. I can't at at the moment. I can't just sort of close my eyes and drop into it. There's certain so levels. So you're completely where I, dissociated, completely like you don't you don't have awareness of what that crap feels like in your body. No, no heaviness, I, no tightness. No, there's um, there's is like there's either so much going on that I can't pinpoint it to one thing. Because when you can pinpoint one thing, for me, there's sort of like there's you can hear the song because it's a quiet room. Now the song still might be playing, but you then start to put a um, a chainsaw and a, a blender and a dog barking and kids screaming. Okay, I I can just hear chaos. I can't hear the chainsaw. Not that a chainsaw should be in the house. Um, kids screaming and then. Um, you know, dog barking and all of these things, right? Because at the moment, either I'm dissociated or overwhelmed. Mm. And so... Well, dissociation but, is, is the consequence of overwhelm. Because when I've got a little bit of this stuff, if it's just the song playing or the dog barking, I have actually have capacity to drop in. Yeah. And to navigate it. And, I, you know... But at this, the way I feel right now, when it's much higher, it's no hope. I actually need I need stuff to calm down first before I can sort of drop into it. And again, it's sort of like I find capacity when I can compartmentalize. And this is probably me from a very personal point of view. Okay, maybe I'm feeling that way because I'm stressed about the next mortgage repayment or I'm stressed mm -hmm. about that thing needs to get paid or I'm stressed about a conversation I need to have with someone. Okay. So if I can compartmentalize that, bring that in and sort of go, okay, I can, I can drop in and I go, I, I actually am worried about this, even though I don't feel as though I should be, but I mm -hmm. am. I can work around this either through surrendering to sort of go, what will be, will be. I just need to follow what I need to do. And then it then brings some capacity in and then you can maybe look at the next one and the next one and the next one but right now it's like everything's at full raw and it's a circus yeah and so at that point dropping in you're dropping into a circus where the hell do you start you and so maybe it is disassociation you drop in and go nah and drop out <laughs> yeah yeah, 100%. Um, and so you've described exactly what happens. And it also makes sense because the things that were on your list as the self-regulation were all things to numb out. So our best strategies, when our nervous system is super dysregulated, our best strategies are numbing out mm. or getting out. <laughs> and we get out by redirecting, redirecting our attention. Now, if you were regulated or even if you were dysregulated but had guidance and support, the example that you gave was the blender and the music and the dog and all the things, the chainsaw. Don't, for, don't forget the chainsaw. That's very important. The chainsaw yeah. inside, very important. <laughs> um, if you, <laughs> We have through attentional capacity, uh, like um, attentional focus, we can we can shift our attention. For example, if I held up, um, five pens and they were all different colors. And I said, I just want you to focus on the red pen, focus on the red pen. The, the other colored pens are all still there, but you have focused your attention only on the red pen. Now, mm -hmm. if you had completely dissociated from that experience, it's like turning around so that you can't actually see any of the pens, but does it mean the red pen isn't there? No. All the pens mm. are still there. It's just that you have chosen to completely remove your attentional focus from the pens. You've gone, no, nah, this is too hard. I'm out. Mm. 
Mm. And this happens a lot of the time, like for kids who struggle with um, in the classroom or if they're feeling overwhelmed or if they think that um, something is hard, they'll dissociate. And so by dissociating, obviously it means that it's not going to make sense. They're going to go, oh, no, I can't remember information. I can't take anything in. I'm stupid. I'm dumb. None of that's actually true. It's just that putting attention on that thing felt uns- like it felt overwhelming. And because it was so overwhelming, they've completely dissociated. So their attention has gone elsewhere, mm. which then means that they don't stand a chance. And so that's a really, really, really big strategy that our nervous system will use. Now, for you, absolutely you could bring your awareness back to your body but what that says to me is that your body doesn't feel safe right now Mm. and so your awareness can't come back to your body because it's not safe it's like going oh i'm gonna go back into my home now even though it's still on fire we wouldn't walk into a house that's still burning on fire right gotta get get the chainsaw can't leave that in the house (laughs) So these are just strategies and tactics that our nervous system that our nervous system uses. So if you can observe that that stuff is happening and you can't, you you are so overwhelmed that, and your the overwhelm is unsafe. You're so overwhelmed that you can't even have awareness of your body, what you're feeling, where Mm. you're feeling it, what that might like, what emotion it might be, or all those kinds of things. That says your nervous system is unsafe. Now, based Mm. on what we know, the things that provide safety for a nervous system, one is certainty, another is significance, another is connection, Mm. right? So if you've got certainty, if you have a group of friends who without fail, if you go and say, hey, you want to get on the drinks and eat some pizza and talk smack about life, that is a pattern. It's predictable. You know they'll be there. You'll know that you'll get significance out of it because you get to whinge and moan. You know you get connection because your people show up. Mm. And so all of those things are just a strategy that you are unconsciously using to meet the needs of your nervous system to bring you back to safety. You're self-regulating the only way that your nervous system knew how. Mm. Except what does this podcast give you? It gives you significance. You're literally yeah. the show. Yeah. yeah. What do you get from me? Connection. Mm. True. So you're, you're getting significance. You're getting connection. You're getting certainty because the certainty was you show up. We're going to record today. We're going to have this conversation and you're going to be okay at the end of it. Mm. So there are healthy ways that we can meet the needs of our nervous system. Now, when it comes to certainty, one of the most powerful, this I do this for myself. I had to do this this morning. I've been feeling extremely overwhelmed myself because of business stuff going on in the background. And I knew that I had a whole day ahead of me today. I had Rise and Thrive recording this podcast. It's a really big day. And I knew that if I didn't take the time and space to bring certainty to my nervous system then and there, I would be dysregulated throughout the whole day and probably exacerbate. I'd be exhausted. I would crash tonight. Mm. So I, I laid down on my bed and my husband was with me and he I said, I need you to hold me. And I said, I'm going to start talking out loud and it's going to sound really weird. You can listen or don't listen, but I, this is what I need to do. And I laid there while he held me, so that was significance and connection. Mm. And then I asked myself the question, well, I asked God, what does God want me to know to bring me safety right now? And as soon as I asked that question, I started crying and I said, God wants me to know that I'm okay, that I have a whole team around me to support me, that even when I fall short in my patience, he will give me patience, that I like all the things, all the reassurance, all the encouragement that I needed for my nervous system in that moment. Mm. Because I could sense the dysregulation. I was rushing this morning. I was rushing my kids to school. I felt pressed for time. I was moving quickly and erratically. I was really flighty. My heart was racing. And I knew, and and I also take these deep breaths, like, 
And when I do that a lot, I know that that's me trying to self-regulate. It's an unconscious thing that I do to self-regulate. And all those things were the things that I needed to know, even though so I, I didn't really know why I was dysregulated in the first place. Mm. Nothing had happened this morning. It was a full moon. That's okay. <laughs> Like there was all this stuff going on in the background. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. The, 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 from my own experience and working with clients, these are the biggest things that could result in this. The first one is change. Mm. Is there a lot of change <clears throat> going on in, in your life or in the world around you? It doesn't even and, have to be in your own and life. It, and, and probably you, you're not sort of saying massive change. It could be like a whole number of little changes. It could be lots of little changes. Like, for instance, um, I, at the start of last year, had two weeks where I was just a self-sabotaging train wreck. And wow. I got to the point where I was like, what on earth is going on? And I said to Steve, I just need to go and be on my own. Please don't come in. I'll come out when I'm ready. And I sat down with a pen and paper and I just journaled. I just wrote every single thing that came out, like automatic writing. And what it turned out to be was that I was anticipating all of these big changes. My youngest child was starting school for the first time. My kids were changing school and I had fears whether they would even be okay. Would it go well? Would they not like it? Would my son cope? Will their teachers be nice? Will they make friends? I had all this stuff. We were preparing to get married. So I had all these fears coming up around that. You know, will it go well? Will we be okay living together? All this stuff. Um, I can't even remember the other things. But really... It was a whole culmination of little things. Now, all those changes were actually great. It was exciting that we were getting married. It was awesome that my girl was starting school. It was awesome that we were moving house and that we had bought our own house. All those things were positive things, but very dysregulating for my nervous system Mm. because with each of those things came fear. Well, so you, like, like you were saying, there's like the top three. The first one you're talking about is certainty. When there's yeah. change, it, it, it mucks around with your certainty. 100%. Because I ha- couldn't possibly have certainty that my kids would make friends. I couldn't possibly have certainty that they would come home from school and go, we love it. I couldn't possibly have certainty that our marriage was going to be blissful or that, you know, I, I didn't have certainty around anything. And so I was mm. like left out to dry feeling really really dysregulated so there's that the next one if it's not that there's lots of change happening the next one for me is that I have a big opportunity so there's potential for me to step into something so much bigger so I'm stepping out of my comfort zone into something Mm. that is unfamiliar even though it has the potential to be massive. So to give you an example, I launched a membership program. Now, when it comes to having conversations with people, um, offering them my services, I have no fear of rejection whatsoever because I know that my, I know my services, they're familiar to me. I know what the offer looks like. I know the value people get. I know all those things. They're certain for me, so it's safe. And I know that if someone says no, it's not because I'm terrible, the service offering's terrible, that I have certainty around it. Mm. But when I had to contact people and offer them this new membership, I was massively dysregulated. And I was dysregulated, I realised, because of fear of rejection. Now, the fear of rejection that was coming up had nothing to do with me It had to do with the fact that there was no certainty because it was a new membership program. I didn't have certainty on what that would look like, how that would go, how people would receive it. Is what I'm asking for in terms of investment fair? Is it too much? Is it not enough? Oh, there was a lot of uncertainty. Mm. And so that was really dysregulating. So change, really scary. 
um, what was the one I just spoke about? Fear of rejection <laughs> for you. <laughs> no, no. So it's actually um, stepping into a new area of growth. Yeah, Feels which really uh, which I, I think it sort of still falls under the uncertainty, right? Yeah. Um, Look, every, every option comes back to uncertainty. Yeah, because I think the, the, the big three that you talked about was uncertainty, significance, and connection. And so um, you, or you've certain, covered... certainty, significance, and connections, or the lack yeah. of. Yeah, and so if yeah. you to to feel highly regulated, if I was certain about everything in my life, if I had significance, which you can get like the 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 last two significance and connection, when you're in the right relationship, I believe you can nail both of those instantly, right? Because in the right the right relationship, you'll have connection and you'll feel significant. In the wrong connection, or in the wrong relationship, yes, you'll have connection, but it'll just it'll mean nothing. Because um, I don't think everyone will sort of say I can only be regulated when I'm on YouTube. That I don't think everyone's looking for that kind of significance. Mm -hmm. They want to be sort of um, recognized and seen in the work that they do. Yes, um, but. Yeah, for me, that that sort of big piece of connection and significance. Like I'm, I'm significant to my kids, I'm significant to my family, I'm significant to this show, and you know, I'm significant to my friends. Um, but I think even as I'm talking about it now, you know, that significance happens regardless, and everyone's significant in their own way to people, whether you realise it or not. 100%. This is not. Um, but knowing I have that significance right now doesn't mean anything. No. It doesn't help. It doesn't help because it's sort of like, I've got it, great. No, because it's not about something you have. It's about something that your nervous system's intrinsically trying to chase. So and this, and this is what I'm trying to figure out, right? As I'm feeling this way, because this is a problem solver within me, yes, I'm happy to sit in it begrudgingly. But how do I find a way to understand the message, learn the lesson, do whatever it is, not to distract it and shush it away, but I'm sure as hell I'm not going to just sit in this forever. This is not what life is, just to sit in one, you know, tremendous stew of crap, right, to sort of go, I'm going to become the most, you know, spiritual person by going through the most amount of crap. Hell no. So... I want to be able to find a way out. So significance mm -hmm. in this in this part for me, it's not gonna it's not gonna move the needle at all. Okay, maybe I'm too greedy. Maybe I'm not you know uh, conscious or awake enough. Whatever it is, it's just it just it is. Number two, certainty. Well, today, I'm certain of what I feel. I have control over everything. I have my own house, my own agenda. All of these things, I have bills that will be covered. I've got, um, like, there are other relationships out there that are changing and morphing and, and things like that, but it doesn't feel like or I can't conceptually think it's going to be changing. So I'll put that as a question mark, right? Maybe, maybe not. But what all of this is doing is to know what would soothe all of this without a doubt would be connection, 100%. Okay. And, um, in our, and again, being a single dad, obviously I'm yearning a certain type of connection. And so it's not, you know, I've got amazing friends. I really do. Massive shout out to both Bruno and Jackie. Jackie and Bruno, they're my two most favourite adults in the whole world, outside of this podcast, of course, Ash. <laughs> um, so, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean, it's like outside of it, because you're an amazing, amazing friend and amazing person as well. But even outside of that, that would take the edge off. And so what this all sort of really points to me is a very – you know, I can only intellectualize one way out of this to get rid of this discomfort. And um, it is it is that. So, but yes, I also know, give myself time, 
I'll feel better. I'll work through it, all of those. But to stop decision-making that actually will then go, okay, well, I can make this all go away by insert mistake or bad decision here. Mm-hmm. Because that will certainly fix that, but then create create other issues. Massively. But, and that's for me personally, but, you know, when I want to hypotheticalize, yes, it is a new, new word, look it up. It's daviddictionary.com. Um, imagine someone's in this position and they've come across this podcast or episode and they're sitting in the mud. Mm-hmm. What does a mud taste like? Don't care. I'm not going to eat it. What does it look like? I, I, I'm not. I'm not looking at it. What does it feel like? It feels like f- mud, <laughs> right? Like I can't. I can't break out anything sort of past that. What are some of the things? I I really love these three things that you've spoken about: certainty, connection, and significance. Yeah. Is it that you just start to? Are we thinking our way out of this? Are no. we feeling? Is it a combination of these things? So certainty, significance and connection are all really important and and all play a role in the safety of our nervous system. But when it comes to this immediate dysregulation, the fastest way back to safety is certainty. Now, your big picture certainty, so the things that you said certainty-wise, you've gone straight to big picture. But I'm not talking about big picture. It's that right now because you're trying to consciously, cognitively provide certainty. 100%. But the, the thing that requires certainty is your unconscious, mm. which you don't have conscious awareness of. And so what I would do is if this Make is you, if you are feeling dysregulated, if you are feeling mm. in the mud, what I would invite you to do is I place my hand over my chest. So the reason that I do that is because when we're dissociated from our body, if we place our hand over our chest, sort of where our heart is, we will start to feel the beat of our heart through the palm of our hand. So that's causing integration of sensory information. We'll start to feel the temperature shift where our palm is in contact with our chest. Mm. You'll start to feel it start to warm up. And then if you speak, if you make an audible vocal sound, you will even feel the intricacies of the vibration coming through your chest or coming through your hand. And so that is a really, really powerful way to invite ourselves back into our body safely. And then Mm -hmm. I would close my eyes because when my eyes are closed, we don't have any frame of reference of the here and now because whatever this dysregulation is about is not about a threat that's in our environment right here, right now, because there is no threat. So that means that if we remove the frame of reference of that threat, our mind now has the potential to go to wherever the threat was. Now, whether we have awareness of that threat or we don't have awareness of the threat, the invitation and space for our unconscious to go to that threat is now available because we've taken ourselves Mm -hmm. out of this time and this space. And so then I would just connect with my body and bring more safety and regulation through my breath. So I would take a few deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Mm. And then I would simply ask the question, what is it that my unconscious needs to know to release this fear right now? What is it that my unconscious needs to know to feel safe? And the answers will just come. Straight away. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I definitely feel like a lot more grounded from yeah. doing all of that. Um, don't necessarily have the answer whether that's because. Because you sat with it for about half a second. Yeah. And we also are doing a show. So, um, maybe <laughs> that's um, yes. But if you sit, if you invite, if you create the space and ask that question and invite the answer, it will come. And so for me, it took this morning, it took about 30 seconds. But I needed to create the space to get that answer. And the things that came up for me, I didn't know that I 
needed reassurance that I had people in my team and that I had people around to support me and that everything was going to be okay. I didn't know I needed that. Mm. If you had have consciously, if you had have said to me, Ash, what do you need today? I would have gone, I don't know, a, a coffee and more sleep maybe. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't have been that. And so we can't cognitive or conscious our way into meeting our needs when the needs are unconscious and below the level of our awareness. But how do you, and I think it, it takes a lot of courage, I suppose, to be able to look at that and be in this circus, right? You just stepped into a room, full circus, and to be able to go, this will help. Put the hand on your heart, be quiet, in do exactly what you just sort of said. Big, deep breaths. Because... You're still, like for me at the start of the episode, you're still acting out of everything else that's going on in your head as a classic overthinker now. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're being dissociative, it's sort of like, well, you know. So I, I guess when you, do, when you are feeling these things, give it a try. What's the worst thing that could happen? 100%. Um, because part of me is sort of like I don't want to do it because, you know, I want to choose to still feel shit. Yeah, it's like that chip on the shoulder. Have you, have you ever read the, the book Existential Kink? No. Ah, oh, this is what the whole book is about, about how we choose our own suffering, where we could very easily go and just let let things go and break free of our suffering, but because there is there is literally a reward chemical. The predictability mm. of our suffering is pleasurable to our brain. Interesting. Because if, you're to, so, sort of, if yeah. you're to sort of say, okay, I'm in this funk, how do I get out of it? Put your hand on your heart, close your eyes, invite that you know the subconscious to tell you what's going on or go into what are these rooms called where you can go in with a sledgehammer? Oh, smash rooms. Oh, so good. Right. I'll be there going, the smash room, 100%. That will help me. My brain says that will help me. Mm -hmm. Where the other one would be sort of like, mm, no, it doesn't, it, does, it doesn't feel like it. And you know what? What does it matter anyway? Because I'm alone. You know, that, that, that victim mindset. So yeah. you, get um, having massive, said, you get a massive kick of serotonin out of that. Out of the victim mindset. 100%. And you get mm -hmm. dopamine because if your pattern is those things, the predictability of it and repetition of it is a huge hit of dopamine. Gotcha. Even gotcha. though the, predict, the suffering is what's predictable. And so this is where our heightened level of consciousness has to, the observer of the pattern has to have a voice. Mm. And so you observed yourself in this pattern. You observed the compuls compulsive desires to just throw a gr grenade and blow it up today. Yep. And, and yet you didn't. The desires were still there. The dysregulation mm. was still there. But the observer of that dysregulation and the observer of those compulsions chose otherwise from a higher yes. level of consciousness which is massive in terms and, of your growth and for and for those that are into astrology around us know that i'm a double fire <laughs> in my top three which means when i light something you know, i i light it to burn it down <laughs> so the grenades are normally quite big that i carry around <laughs> so thank you ash <laughs> you're so welcome <laughs> So, right. has that been insightful? It has been. Like, I'm, I'm feeling a lot more relaxed, um, feeling a, a, a bit better uh, about it, glad that I did it. Because um, I also know the flip side of cancelling today, there would have been, there would have been things, that would have been consequences. We would have had to have done this at some stage. Um, would have put more time pressure on the both of us. So that actually not showing up, yes, I would have um, picked up the phone, Uber Eats, 
um, wouldn't have probably even gone out, um, found something on YouTube, Netflix, whatever it is. And then every now and again, there would have been probably a sinking feeling like, oh, when are we going to do this episode? When are we got, you know, bang, 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 bang. So turning up, pushing through as uncomfortable as, as much as I didn't want to, I'm glad I did, um, which I hope, you know, for people out there who are going through this because they've picked up on this particular episode because of the the title or the subject, glad you're here, hope it was informative and give it a go. That thing, the what would you call it, Ash, that you sort of go through? It's like a practice or a meditation or a... Yeah, it's just a little what, process. It's a just little, a process I take myself through. And I will yep. use that with clients no matter how far down their, their journey they are in terms of self-awareness or healing. When I lead them through that, every person without fail 100% of the time com- can come out of it. Mm. At least enough. Like it doesn't fix everything, especially if you're going through big stuff. No. But it, 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 brings, it brings you capacity of yeah, some Yeah, it brings sort. you back to now. It brings you back to the actual reality, the safety of, of this reality in this present moment. Mm, mm. And I hope you found this episode relatable. If you've got anything else you'd like to add, put it in the show, Yeah, you know, put mm. in the comments, let us know. Um, it's as real as it gets. Absolutely. And um, let us know if you want a bit more of us showing up in these different moods. I'll be interested to see, especially when I'll re-watch or re-listen to this, if there's much of a difference. But um, anything else you want to add before we wrap up, Ash? No, just know that your nervous system's always trying to work for your good. Know that if you are dysregulated, it's because your nervous system is perceiving a threat and that perception is real, even if it's not real in reality. And so be gentle with yourself, nurture yourself, love yourself, love yourself enough to be present with yourself and actually give yourself the space to ask the questions, turn towards it. If you run away from it, it's still going to be there. It's going to (laughs) come right back with you. It's going to chase after you. I promise you, you can't outrun it. If you numb it out, it's still going to be there. So turn towards it lovingly and safely well said ash and on that note we'll catch you next week guys thank you very much bye-bye bye